Hi, I'm Ranger Daniel. I'm a biological science technician here at Zion National Park. And I'm standing here at the end of the Riverside Walk, or the start of the Narrows. And behind me, you can see the Virgin River running through the canyon. Today, I'd like to talk to you about our Watch Wildlife, Respect Wildlife project here at Zion National Park. This project is all about mitigating the problems that can arise from human and wildlife interactions. Here at the park, we have a lot of interesting animal species that you might encounter. These are species like California condors, desert bighorn sheep, mule deer, gray fox, ring-tailed cats, and if you're extremely lucky, you may even come across a Gila monster or mountain lion. Now, my mountain lion encounter might sound scary to some, but we have one species here in the park that has proven to be even more dangerous to visitors, and that is the rock squirrel. So we are here at Riverside Walk because you are almost guaranteed to see squirrels here. Now these guys are about 20 inches long and weigh around 1.3 to 1.6 pounds. They have grayish brown hair and these large eyes and long tails. Sounds pretty scary, right? Well, the reason they are dangerous is because they are abundant, abundant and truth to be told, they can look pretty cute and harmless, which leads people to th thinking they can touch or feed them. But what happens is they end up getting bit. And this happens all the time here at the park. These bites can be extremely painful. They can get infected and even spread infectious diseases. Also, feeding any wild animal changes their behavior, often with tragic results. Most of these species have specialized diets and unnatural foods will only negatively affect their health. And I assure you, they're not hungry. Think of it like this. I have a dog at home and I say, and say I left behind a big old chocolate bar wrapper and all in her reach, and she just got done eating dinner. Well, do you think she will still try and eat that chocolate bar? Absolutely. And what's gonna happen afterwards? Well, she's probably gonna feel super sick. And that's because there are chemicals in these foods that are toxic to these animals, and they have no way of knowing this. They just think of a free piece of candy. Artificial food sources can also lead to unnatural concentrations of wildlife which can increase the transmission of disease. Lastly, these animals can become completely dependent on human food, which can cause them to lose their ability to forage for natural foods, or they can become malnourished and even die. Now, there are a few ways to mitigate these problems. One way to solve this is by simply not feeding the animals. And I don't mean just by hand. We also need to make sure we don't leave any extra food laying around. This can be on trails, on the picnic table at camp, around your vehicle, or even in backpacks that you leave on the ground, because animals will chew through your pack to get to this food. I've also had ravens unzip my backpack to sell my sandwiches and tear apart some of my extra cash. So please, do not leave your backs unattended. Probably the best way to mitigate these problems, though, is by practicing our old friend social distancing. We practice our own little form of social distancing here at the park in regards to wildlife. And that means keeping 50 feet from small mammals, birds, or reptiles, and 100 feet or six cars away from large mammals, like big horned sheep or condors. Another way to easily remember this is by using the old thumb trick. If you stick out your thumb and you can cover up the animal with your entire thumb, then you're probably at safe distance. If not, you need to scoot back. Now, some of these animals may have become some of these animals have become habituated to humans in Zion. And this is most, most likely because of visitors illegally feeding them. And yes, it is against federal law to feed or approach these animals. So if these animals like rock squirrels or mule deer do approach you, then we want you to do your best to scare them off. Now never touch or throw anything at the animals. Just try to simply yell, clap, or stomp your feet. And this will usually do the trick. We also need to be aware of some of the other dangers associated with larger animals, like the mule deer. Now again, these animals might look cute and cuddly to some, but they can be quite aggressive. Over the years, we have had reports of everything from mule deer, pushing people out of the way to reach picnic tables, to people getting kicked and even children being bitten on the necks. So again, let's never feed these animals and do our best to keep our distance. Lastly, I just want to talk to you really quickly about one of my favorite animals in the park, and that's the desert bighorn sheep. Now, when we were talking about the sheep, one of our biggest problems is people trying to get way too close to take a picture. 
Almost every year, we have a sheep mortality from people trying to chase the animals down, and they end up inadvertently hurting these animals off of cliffs. This is totally unacceptable and not worth any picture. I can assure you that the best way to get a picture of a wildlife is to keep your distance. This way, you're not going to scare the animal off and you'll have more time to observe them and more time to get that perfect shot. If that animal runs away, that means they're frightened and we need to leave them be. So if you're in the park, we'd love for you to enjoy the beautiful wildlife that's all around us. But just remember to be respectful by keeping your distance and by never feeding these animals. Thanks for joining me today, and remember, let's keep wildlife wild.